able to rely more on her staff on the other events so she could focus on this and really prepare her team. Because Balance Beam is like no other event. Uh, there's so much time up there to get into your head and, and you really need to get into your rhythm. Stay calm, stay relaxed, stay very present and not overcorrect if something is slightly off. Ella Burgess now leading off. Great to see her in the lineup. She was out all of 2021 after having suffered an Achilles injury, did not compete last year. And here she is in the leadoff spot in 2022. We'll see a lot more gymnasts smiling on balance beam now. It is really, uh, they've studied it. It helps you relax, get into a rhythm. Watch that one arm back handspring to lay out, step out. Look how determined and aggressive she's attacking this routine. While she was not competing, she really developed as a great leader, was one of those sideline cheerleaders and coaches that really helped Alabama. Of course, Alabama won the SEC championship in a huge upset last year over Florida and LSU. I like how when she finishes a skill, it is very definitive. This is a good one. She needs to focus all the way to the end, not get ahead of herself. Side aerial to a four. Oh, and a step. What? What a moment. Team. That is fantastic. Oh. So happy for this gymnast. Oh, she it's is. It's a long way back that. from a torn Achilles. It's a long way back. And she has made it. And what a moment that she will not forget. So aggressive, so determined, and lovely. Oh, look at, at that. At the same time. That is so great. You know, That's it wasn't that many years ago that a torn Achilles was the end of a career. How cool that she's able to celebrate that moment here with her teammates. Back now to the floor for Oklahoma. Here is Audrey Davis. You see her score tonight, highlighted by that 995 on bars. You heard KJ Kendler, she loves all these routines. I love the diversity mm. of the music and the choreography. This is a modern bluesy routine, and Audrey chose her own music. Opens with a nice front double twist. You see that nice set off the floor into it. Sam, she has a report on Macari Doggett, who will be next up for Alabama on beam. Yeah, thanks, Bart. You'll see a lot of familiar faces in this Bama beam lineup this year, but an interesting change they made was switching Macari Doggett earlier in the lineup because that's what she felt like would make her more comfortable. She also changed her dismount to a round off one and a half, so look out for that as well, Kathy. I love that Dana made that change. They really want to be aggressive in the choice of their elements. They don't want to play it too safe. Of course, you have to balance that risk reward that we talk about. Talk about a masterful coaching job that she has done on beam. She said to Makari in the offseason, what would make you feel more comfortable on beam? And she says, well, to be honest, I want to go early in the lineup. She's done. Beam is such a fluid event, and it's also the connection with your teammates. Um, to become a really great beam team, you have to establish that almost as if you're one. You have each other's back, there are going to be little mistakes here and there, but you build it together. 
adjust to a new skill. Such a nice combination, the split jump. Now she does a tuck open. Notice she went into a tuck position very briefly, kicked out of it and swung down. One and a half twist, didn't quite get that shape after the one and a half twist, where you're just parallel to the floor and you could just float it down and feel your way to the landing. On floor for the Sooners coming up now is sophomore Belle Johnson from Norman. Proud to say that she's one of four gymnasts on the OU team from Bart Connor Gymnastic Academy here in Norman. And coach there is Christian Yvonne. This is a fun, jazzy routine. Big, sharp, sassy movement. Last year as a freshman. enjoying it but she also knows that the positions to hit where to look how to use her expression her facial expression and her body movement and the tumbling was pretty darn good that layout to a rudy to open that's a one and a half twist she followed up after audrey davis had a nine seven two five Emily Gaskins set to go with that unusual mount on beam coming after Makari Dalgat had a 9725. Ella Burgess, a great 985 to lead them off. Kathy, you and Sam are both superb on the balance beam. What do you guys think of that mount? Uh, it's a very popular mount. Um, I've never done it, so I don't even know what it feels like, but it's always a crowd pleaser. <laughs> Emily is such a beautiful beam worker. When she feels confident and is aggressive on this routine, she can just be spectacular here. She has nice form, beautiful flexibility. She just has to stay relaxed, not let the nerves start to creep up, just stay calm. Patient right here and attack this landing. Just like that. Switch leap. The back leg was a little bit low. I love that she kept that toe pointed and leg locked out straight though. Nice gainer full, just a slide back. Dana's gonna be happy with that routine because I don't think she was originally in the lineup no. for this competition. So she stepped into it and delivered. She was an altered on beam, and she got the call here in this final rotation. And that's what Dana loves about her. It's like, I've got this. Emma LaPinta will be next up for the Sooners on the floor. This is always a spunky routine. Coming after Belle Johnson notched a 9-9 for her clean exercise. It's, this is a fun, upbeat routine, and I'm happy to say it's to the music. She always had trouble <laughs> finding the beat. KJ had her walking around her headsets on her this freshman year. This triple four is a this. highlight, though. Woo! Triple twist, one of the most difficult passes done, and also... The, the most difficult to stay clean and deduction free. Front full 
whole different layout, nice float in that second somersault. The jump, she needed to turn just a little bit more in the air. Well, she had a great 2021 season. NCAA Elite 90 Award winner, Big 12 Scholar Athlete of the Year. And she averaged over 9-9 on floor. Good routine. Strong finish. Could have gotten her arms up just a little bit more into that double back, but well done. Big 12 now on ESPN Plus is a must-have for Big 12 fans. The documentary series Our Time is back for another season. Every Thursday, go all access with the Baylor men's and women's basketball teams. You'll get an unprecedented behind-the-scenes look at both programs with never-before-seen footage and sound from players and coaches. Sign up today at ESPNplus.com slash Big 12 now. Janaya Adams now on beam. Emily Gaskins is 975 before her. Beautiful form on that front aerial. Hands being out, step out, nicely done. <gasps> Lost her balance on the hot bat. I like the combination of her flexibility and power. She uses both well on this event. Leaning back just a little bit on that double wolf turn. Whoa. But she finessed it. <laughs> I think her eyelashes saved her on that one. <laughs> just looked bad of the eye and it shifted the center of gravity. <laughs> oh, I like the back leg on that leap. Unfortunately, she may not get credit for that connection because you can't have any pause or any slight balance issue between the skills to get the connection bones. Whoa, hold on to that stick. A lot of fight in that routine. It was not perfect, so she had some issues that she had to really fight through. Typically very consistent on bars and beams. She has shown less consistency on floor and vault. But all the coaches have been telling us, you know, they all need this first meet just to kind of see where they are. You know, you do all the preseason prep, but it's not the same until you get in the gym, in competition, on TV. It's different, isn't it? KJ Kindler's description was perfect. They're ironing things out still. Mm -hmm. They And these coaches don't want them to try for perfection right now. Be aggressive, trust your training, and let's see where we are. We're gonna like this. This is Carly Woodard coming after Emma LaPinta at a 9.825. Run double twist, a little bit of a large step out. They'll take a slight deduction there. Did I mention I like the blues? Yes, you did. I love it. I have nothing wrong with it either. She only did one floor routine for them last year. We saw it, it was a 9825. Interesting technique mm -hmm. on that first skill. Kind of dropped her arm to twist. Beautiful feet on those leaves where it shows off that toe point. just a little bit more, and I think that'll happen through the course of the season. 
Only two events for the Sooners today, but you got a 9-9-5 on beam, and that was a treat. Senior Carly Woodard from Overland Park, Kansas. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Tom Haley, part of the coaching staff. We talk about K.J. Kindler all the time, but this entire staff, including K.J.'s husband, Lou Ball, you see in the background there, 16 years they've been in charge of this program, and they have been the most dominant team in the last decade of women's and senior age gymnastics. They work well together. I call them Oklahoma machine. They <laughs> are a well-oiled machine. Janiah Adams had only a 9-5-2-5, so... The highest score for Alabama was their leadoff, 985 from Ella Burgess. Here is Maddie Rodriguez. I love that she really finished that so strong. It looked like she almost moved that front foot before she started the series. Thought she was a little off, so well done. Very solid on the side area. Elevation off the beam and a difficult second jump, that tuck, tuck jump of a full turn. This could be a highlight, however. She has it all here. She has an intensity about her that I really love. It's deliberately intense choreography. Oh. Look at the wow. lift. It continued to rise on the pike double back. up the form a little on that front handspring, but look how she looks. Even KJ told us the other day, when you see her, you'll think about Anastasia Webb. Both tall, and I think the term she used was slinkety. Oh, her technique is great. This <laughs> is going to be a great routine, because I can just, it, it will get better and better and richer and richer as she performs. And I love how she uses her facial expression so perfectly for the mood of the routine. Here's the first pass. Wow. That was my favorite pass in the whole routine. All it, three of us announcers could have walked underneath that exactly. quick double pass. Front double twist, opens up that front double. Oh, she oh, did she step did. out of bounds. I didn't see a flag a go point. up, so if the flag didn't go up, they might not have seen it. I don't know that there was a line judge over on that side of the floor, so... Insignificant whether she gets away with it or not, because the Sooners are going to win this one today. 9-9-2-5 nine, nine, is the score for Maddie Walagora. That's a huge score for Alabama here, and Luisa Blanco will be their final performer in this event. And sets up one of the most beautiful being of performers in the country. She is exquisite on this event. She had some issues in that final touch warm-up, but a true beamer can work through those, make those corrections. This triple series 
two layouts in a row. Oh, she took out the second one, probably wise. It was what she was struggling with a little bit in the warm up. Here's a fun fact about her. There's only one other gymnast at Alabama that has won the SEC Beam and NCAA Championship in the same season. And guess who that is? Her coach, Dana Duckworth. Look at the high releve. She goes up so high on her toes. Everything is just so picture perfect. Or just back leg on those leaps. Would have liked to see a little bit more split, but I know why she didn't now. She was slightly off in the air and couldn't quite hit that that optimum position in the air. But even slightly off, she is gorgeous. It's just, it's a treat watching her on balance beam. I think those who've not tried the beam don't realize how many thousands of corrections go on mid-air. Oh. When you're going for a big leap and all of a sudden you feel off, it's constant. It's incredible how many and it's kind of like riding the bike. When you ride a bike, you don't sit there and, and, and concentrate on every single little turn of the wheel. You feel it. You keep the rhythm going. And you make those slight corrections as needed. The, the lovely flexibility. She really has everything for being. You see Reagan Smith average last year just under 9-9 nine, nine on the floor. This is always a treat as well. Reagan chose her own music too, and she can perform the heck out of this routine. Scores in for Jordan Bowers. It's a An enjoyable mm -hmm. routine. I was smiling from start to finish. This is going to be another good one for Oklahoma. She deserves a great year this year, doesn't she? Does. She, yeah, she does. And that, that, <laughs> that final tumbling pass. Well, let's take a look at the second pass first. Back one and half. Very good form. Just a slight soft knees on that front layout. As I said, that's being picky. But these are the kind of routines you want to see them just perfect everything. Wonderful position in that straddle jump. Just over split. And the Sooners will get the win, by the way. Quick scoring update. Luisa Blanco, the anchor performer for Alabama on the beam, at a 9.85. So, a lot of happy folks here in Norman, Oklahoma. When we come back, we'll wrap this one up. It's a great season opener for both of these teams. A little bit of a gut check is what they have and what they don't have. But these two teams will certainly be contending for championships at the end of the year. Pages long right now. There were so many good things to be happy about. Nice to see new faces out there, new talent out there feeling what it feels like under competitive nerves. You know, and they showed a little bit, but you, you learn from that and you move on. So I saw some good things. At the top of the show, we talked about the big challenge for the Sooners this year is to replace those four scores from Anastasia Webb, who graduated. And one of those athletes to step up in the all-around today was Audrey Davis. Had a highlight of a 9.95 on bars. And right now, she's with Sam Pesson. Yeah, that's right, Bart. First time doing the all-around, first time winning the all-around. What do you think about your performance here tonight? I think that I did a really great job tonight. There's a lot to improve on, and I think that the competition that we had really helped. Alabama's a great team, and we really brought our best today, and we did a great job as a team, and I'm very proud of myself. First time doing all-around in three years, so it's 
It's been a while. I was proud of myself. Knocking those cobwebs off. Yeah. Early career win for your team to beat Alabama. What's the focus going into the meet next weekend? To really just sharpen up on the landing to make sure that everything that we're doing is on point and everything that we do in practice comes here because we are a spot-on team and I'm very proud of my team and how we did tonight and we just have a lot to grow from. All right, thank you, Audrey. Bart, do you hear that? Yeah. Things looking good for the Sooners. They had a 197-4 today. And, of course, next week they're going to go out to Utah. Utah on their opening weekend. This weekend they had a 197-1 in the best of Utah. And, of course, they're one of the iconic programs in women's collegiate gymnastics. So lots of great stuff coming up on ESPN. All right, looks like Sam Pesic has Allie Stern with her from the Oklahoma Sooners. Allie, you're a senior and you scored your first career 10. What went through your mind when you saw that score pop up? Um, I don't know. I was, I kind of didn't know what to think. I was like, wow, that's crazy. But um, Kat set me up really well, and I just did, a, did the vault I know I could do. Well, you already scored a 10, so what's the goal for the rest of the season on vault? to keep getting them and to, <laughs> to keep sticking them. <laughs> All right, that's amazing. Thank you, Bart. Did you hear that? She's going to keep getting those tens Wait, weekend after weekend. I can't resist. Stick them and they will come. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, uh, that's great. Well, great start for her. And when we come back here to Norman, Oklahoma, we'll wrap this one up with final thoughts on this season opener for the Sooners, 197-4, Alabama, 195-875. The first and the ESPN app. One app, one tap. Here is the final score. The number three ranked Oklahoma Sooners with a impressive 197-4 to open their season. Alabama showed a bit of inconsistency, but great potential, scoring yet only a 195-875. Alabama next week will go down to Gainesville, Florida, and we'll be there because they take on the Florida Gators in our first regular season meet ever on ABC Network. It's going to be great. Hi, everybody. I'm Bart Connor, along with my fellow Olympic medalist, Kathy Johnson. Uh, let's talk a little bit about some of the highlights that we saw today. I think we all expected a few hiccups because it's early season. All the coaches are trying to work the kinks out. So we saw some of the kinks, and we saw some great gymnastics. Absolutely. And we didn't talk about it a lot because it is kind of the new normal. COVID mm. protocol is going to change things so that when an athlete isn't available, others have to step in those lineups. Mm -hmm. That's the big takeaway here. Mm -hmm. We saw new people stepping into situations they haven't been in and and they did a great job there are things to work on there are things to build on um, and i think that's the important thing for both of these teams highlights for the sooners of course were the two perfect tens on ball what a wow moment <laughs> times two it was she almost surprised herself on that landing it's like wow i don't need to move <laughs> that was awesome so very exciting to start your season off 10 0 vaults, and as I said, she wants to score some more. I was like, you know what? They will, they will, they will come. And Kim Machado did a terrific job for Alabama on the bars, and this is an event that they were superb on last year, and they have enormous potential again this year. I love to see them fight through the little bit of quirks um, throughout the routine. But they stayed focused. Audrey Davis was wow. just sublime. Sublime. That's a perfect word. And adding this half twist, that's a game changer mm -hmm. for this gymnast because that is your best bar routine you may see in NCAA. How about this beam routine? It was so wonderful, especially knowing her story. Right. Didn't get to finish the postseason, hurt her ankle at regionals. And just for her to get back on the beam and feel that moment was wonderful. Lisa Blanco on floor for Alabama. Just lovely as can be. She is the epitome of grace, but she also has the power, the technical precision on the very difficult skills as well. Fun gymnast to watch. Now, well, Agora had a terrific day in the all around. So calm, so aggressive from start to finish. Just a picture perfect landing. And this is an exciting gymnast that we're going to see a lot of over the next four years. 
so dynamic in her presentation, so unique and just fearless in terms of being herself out on the floor. I love it. And what a terrific story. A young lady who was in that elite track and kind of got burned out, had a back injury, took off two and a half years, stayed a level 10, and now she is fulfilling her gymnastics dream here as a collegiate gymnastics. I love seeing that story, don't you? I do. Incredibly inspiring. All right, the Sooners get the win in Norman. Next week, they'll have to take on Utah. They'll have to be even better to beat the Utes out there.